In this video, I will discuss step two of setting up a Windows virtual machine in the cloud using Amazon Web Services. The first step in that process is to get logged into Amazon Web Services. And you may be logged in already, in which case bear with me until I'm logged in as well. What you're looking at is the screen of my notebook computer and I've already launched the Google Chrome browser. So the first step is to navigate to AWS. I do that with aws.amazon.com. So to get logged into AWS, I'm going to click on the My Account Console drop-down menu and select the first item, AWS Management Console. And this will take me to a login screen. So I'll enter my email address. And then my password. And click Sign In. And this will take you to the screen that I've shown you before that has links to all of the AWS services. If you were already logged into AWS but not at this screen, you can generally get there by going to this Services drop-down menu and looking for Console Home. Now to launch a, an instance, uh, a virtual computer, go to the EC2 link, which is the Elastic Cl Compute Cloud, and click on that. And you'll get a dashboard screen that allows you to launch a new instance very, very easily. You'll see in the middle of the page here, there's a blue button that says Launch Instance. So you can create an instance by clicking that. And what you get next is a list of all of the possible standard instances, standard virtual computers that you can create. And you'll see, for example, the first one is a Linux machine. Now we don't want that. What we want is a Windows machine. So we're just going to go ahead and scroll down through the list until you get to Microsoft Windows Server 2012 R2 Base. This is the machine that we're going to actually launch. And you'll notice that it's eligible for the free tier which means that uh, you won't have to pay for it until after you have been uh, signed up with AWS for more than a year. Notice that there are other computers that are available. For example, you can get uh, one that has a database already a part of it. Uh, you can get machines that are more powerful, So, um, uh, and, and there's just lots of choices. But what we need to do right now is just select the Microsoft Windows Server 2012 R2 base, which is a 64-bit computer. Now, you get to then choose the instance type, and uh, we're just going to accept this default, which is the uh, general purpose. It's a T2 Micro, which is a relatively small machine, but it is free tier eligible. It has one virtual processing unit, one gigabyte of memory, uh, and it has storage provided by Amazon service called EBS. So we can just go ahead and click review and launch. And um, you can select to have your basic disk drive on this computer to be a solid state drive, which will improve the performance uh, cer certainly of the boot up. So I do recommend that you accept this, this default setting here, which says make general purpose SAD, SSD the default boot volume for all instances launched from the console. Actually, as I read this, you don't want to make it for all. Make it for this one only. You'll notice that as a free tier eligible customer, you get up to 30 gigabytes, which is the, the standard amount that's associated with the, this machine. So let's go ahead and, and select the, the checkbox um, that makes the SSD available only for this instance and then go ahead and click Next. Now there are many security issues associated with 
having computers in the cloud. There are a host of security issues that have to do with Amazon's part of, of this whole process. And then another collection that have to do with the computer itself. Because what we're going to be creating here is a, a Windows computer that's connected uh, to the internet. As long as it's on, it's connected to the internet. And uh, that obviously creates all of the usual kinds of problems that you have when you have any computer that's connected to the internet. Now, um, Amazon has a service which is called IAM, which uh, is different, incidentally, than this AMI that's right here. So IAM is all about managing security. We're going to, to keep things simple right now, just accept the defaults that it gives you, uh, but please understand that this is relatively weak security. But we can just go ahead down here to this button that says launch and launch the instance. Now, when you launch the instance, you need to have a secure connection between your computer and that instance. And the dialogue that has just come up about creating a new key pair is, is all about making sure that that pipeline connection is private. So what you are doing here are, is creating keys or passwords uh, for the process of encryption that will allow these machines to talk. So what you do here is you go to the drop-down menu and instead of uh, having choose an existing key pair, uh, what you're going to do is select create a new key pair. Now I think that your uh, setup here will have automatically loaded the create a new key pair um, into this drop-down menu. Uh, I've been using Amazon Web Services, and so I believe that's why it gave um, it defaulted to the option of using an existing one. But we're going to create uh, a new key pair, and we'll call this instance one key pair. Now, the data for this key pair needs to be downloaded to your computer and saved in, in a place where you will not lose it. If you lose this, you're not going to be able to get connected to your virtual machine. So in just a minute, what I'm going to do is click the download key pair. But before that, I'm going to create a place to put it. And the place that I want to put it is, is in a special folder in the folder that I've created for the course. So I'm going to drop everything down to my desktop on my notebook computer here. And I'm going to click on a link that I have created, a so-called shortcut, that will take me to the folder for the course. And you can see at this point there's not a lot um, here in this folder. So the next thing I'm going to do is create a folder uh, in order to save the data that I need about this, this instance, this computer that I'm creating, which is called an instance, incidentally, in Amazon Web Services. Uh, and because I expect to create more than one of these over time, uh, I need a place to, to save all of that data. So I'm going to go ahead and right click, and then go down to New, and then to um, Folder. And I'm going to call this folder Instance Data. Now I'm going to go ahead and change into that folder. This is where I'm going to put the file that I was about to download from Amazon Web Services. But I also know that I'm going to need a database to contain data about all of these instances. And so let me go ahead and create that as well. So I'm going to right click again and go to New and create a Microsoft Excel worksheet in which I'm going to save any of the, the data that I need for these instances. So I'm just going to call this instance data as well. And uh, I'll leave that uh, closed for the present, but uh, we'll be opening it in just a minute. So now I'm now going to go back to Chrome, select it on the bar down here, and bring it back. And I'm going to go ahead and click Download the Key Pair.
Now by default, Chrome downloads into the download folder. I've put for convenience in my download folder a link also to the course folder. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. You can navigate now to the folder that you just created. And then I'm going to go ahead and go into the instance data and we're going to save this under the default name that it's given which is instance one key pair dot PEM. So I'm just going to go ahead and save that. So I've now downloaded the key and I can go ahead now and click launch instance. So it tells me now that my instance is launching. Now launching a virtual computer is not an instance process at all on Amazon Web Services. So this is going to take several minutes uh, in order for, for it to get set up. And while that's happening, I'm going to go and show you the console essentially where you can manage the instances. So to do that I'm going to go to the services drop-down and then uh, it has a history here that shows me uh, where I've been and that's rather convenient because I want to go back to EC2. And I get this top-level dashboard. I could launch another instance if I wanted to but that isn't what I want to do. What I want to do is go to this instances category on the left hand side here and then click on the menu item instances. And what this will give you is a listing of all of the instances that you have. Now you should only have one instance here. It's the one that, that uh, is initializing. Okay and uh, um, the rest of these are things that I've been doing already. Uh, now while it's initializing here I can give it a name. If I put my cursor over here in this name column you'll see that a little pen icon appears right there and if I click on the pen icon it allows me to create a name and so this is instance number one. Then, if I click the check box I now have a name for the instance. Now at the top here you'll see that there are uh, buttons. There's a blue button called launch instance here which would allow me to create a new instance just as I did before but I don't want to do that. I do want to point out the two other buttons. In a moment once our instance has stopped initializing we're going to try to connect to it. But again we're waiting for it to initialize and so I thought I'd show you a few other things. The actions drop down menu gives you all kinds of things you can do with an instance. And I want to point out the most important one of these. The most important one is in the actions category where I can terminate, reboot, or stop, or start an instance. Now the instance that I have selected here, and I should point that out, um, the actions menu, menu will apply to whatever is selected here in these, these uh, square boxes. Okay, so in order to work on or do something to instance number one here, uh, what I need to do is select it and then the actions menu will be, be applying to it. So if we go down to the actions, I can terminate this instance, which means that I'll kill it completely and it won't come back. Uh, I can stop it. I can start it if it has been stopped already. I can reboot it. Okay, so in general once you create this instance you're going to want to stop and start it, particularly if it's charging you any money because once you stop it it doesn't. Or I can reboot it if I need it to uh, reboot just as you would you know, your own computer. The one you want to be very careful about is using terminate because that, that completely eliminates that instance uh, and, and you can't get it back. You lose, you lose the data. So we're going to go ahead and wait while this instance is uh, initializing. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and pause the video at this point and come back when it's finished. Okay, so the instance has now switched to a running state. 
which means that I probably can, can connect to it at this point. Uh, there may be actually further delay. Um, for this particular instance to launch, it actually took about three or four minutes. So once you launch your instance, uh, please firstly expect that it's going to take a while to get set up and be patient for it to finish. Now, before I close this video, uh, what I want to do is save the information out of this uh, instance that I'm going to need. So I'm going to go back to the folder that I created for instance data. And you'll see that in that folder I have the key pair saved. I also have the Excel file that I created, so I'm going to go ahead and open that. And now I'm going to put in the information about the instance so that I have it um, later and I can manage multiple instances in a sensible way. So I have a name for this instance, then I have an AWS uh, ID number. Uh, I'm going to have a DNS name. And then I'm going to have an IP number. And uh, I'm going to have a, a, a password, a login, and a password. And I think that's the main thing that I'm going to need at this point. So now let me start filling in this data. Uh, I'm going to go over here to my console. Oops, I switched to the wrong thing, so let's go ahead and go back. This is the instance that I just created. The first thing I'm going to do is save the name. So I called this instance number one. Now you can actually create instances with exactly the same name in this name category. You're not restricted in any way as to what you put in here. So I think it's also important to capture the instance ID, which is the unique ID that Amazon Web Services gives the instance. So I just double clicked on this field to select everything. I'm going to go ahead and copy it with Control C and then paste it into the Amazon ID with Control V. The instance is attached to the internet and it has a regular style internet name. So I'm going to go ahead and, and save that. It's over here under the public DNS field. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on this. Actually, it took uh, three clicks before I selected the whole field. So it's going to be Control C then. I'm going to come back to my database and paste in the DNS name. Now it may not be a very pretty name, but uh, there it is. It's a regular, uh, regular URL. Is what it is. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and save the associated IP number, which is right here. And we'll worry about the login and the password when we come back to actually connect to this instance. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and save this file, but might make one more comment. The IP number and the DNS name change every time you stop the computer and start it running again. Okay, so these two fields um, are going to change. If you leave it running all the time, then uh, you're not going to have to change those, those numbers. Uh, obviously, there's an issue with costs there, but I did want to point out that those are likely to change. Let me go ahead and save this file, and I'm going to stop the video now, and in the next video, uh, we'll talk about connecting to this instance.